you know, it's funny to say, but Australia actually has some incredible swimming holes. And so you, you're out in the middle of the desert, you've been out there for seven days and you come across like a legitimate hot spring. Like, and I didn't know Australia has like legit, it's hot water and it's in the middle of nowhere. And there was one that was like as big as a lake. There's the, and, and they're hard to find and they're few and far between. But when you find them, it, it feels like a real reward. Have you done any digging into the geology? Ah, digging into the ge- yeah. and digging into the geology behind that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and so. and I didn't know, but I guess Australia has what they call the Great Artisanal Basin. Under let's say two thirds of the continent, there is a massive amount of fresh water, and it's been down there for like three million years. Um, and it's so deep that it just gets hot, and then it comes out of the earth in certain places. Right. Um, huh. The, yeah, the and heat and pressure has to evacuate itself up. In exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and in places you even get those cool formations that rock, hot springs always leave. You know where they're they're putting all the calcium deposits, and you you mm-hmm. kind of get those mounds and all the kind of funky colors and um. But all the, so hot springs I loved, but also there's a lot of like fresh water swimming holes as well. Um. Yeah, and the radioactive one that's pretty fun. <laughs> the hazmat, <laughs> the radioactive hazmat. Low so that is actually is so the only hot spring in the world that is heated by the decay of uranium. So ah. legitimately, that is heated by nuclear yeah. decay. Um, yeah, it's the only one in the whole world. <laughs> yeah, N- nothing daunting about that. <laughs> no, lots of warning signs, lots of do not swim, lots of do not hang around for too long because the gas bubbling out of it is actually toxic as well. Yes, if you continue to read this in, there will be a problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, we are crunching on time. So let's do hardest <laughs> four by four sections of your entire Australia adventure. Oh, the old telly track by far is number one. Um, and then there's a couple of tracks near there. One's called the Kreb track, one's called uh, Frenchman's track. They both have some like really intense obstacles that the one that. river crossing we looked at for maybe three or four hours. We would not, not <laughs> like, happy to do it but we did in the end and it was great you looked at it for three four hours oh yeah and like walked it and swam it and moved rocked around and Man. like talked about it and yep usually yeah, we ended up um, like winching all the vehicles together and you know going one at a time and multiple yeah. spotters and yeah it was it was a thing that's a different kind of off-roading like at least in the atv utv community which is you know what i've done 50 percent of my off-roading in is three to four minutes of looking at something and not trying it is something is really wrong <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh man what about uh what about fraser island I, that's like uh, when, when we were talking about talking to joel um joel strickland is one of our favorite guests best friends of the show <laughs> he's australian i don't know dan if you know him but joel's no. the best um he's, and- he's an automotive photographer out of melbourne Okay, cool. And he was the first one that told us about Fraser Island. He was like, uh-huh. "Yeah, people people really fuck up over there." They so, <laughs> so you you seem to have not fucked up, but you didn't have any like of the crazy YouTube moments that you know the place is famous for. Yeah, no, we spent ten days there. Um, we saw some of the carnage. We saw other people that fucked up, but I think <laughs> Fraser Island's a really funny one because you get a lot of people there who who either think they know what they're doing and they don't, or they just clearly don't know what they're doing and they know they mm. don't. Like we met people who were driving around on the softest beach sand I've ever seen at 35 PSI. And when we told them they needed to lower their <laughs> tire pressures, they would say, yeah, we did. We went down from 40. We're good. We lowered our pressures. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And so they're the people who get stuck. They're the people who then the waves inundate their car and you know mm. it gets destroyed. And they're, they're just yeah. wheel spinning all day long on soft beach sand. Whereas I drove onto the island, went down to, I think, 16 PSI, and I don't think I ever even spun a wheel, even like on the, the hardest four-wheel drive obstacle on Fraser Island. I just walked, like didn't even spin a Is tire. Is that the the hill thing that goes like up through and then back down? Exactly that. Yeah, it's called yeah. Ingala Rocks. And it has, it's a, it's a pretty decent climb up really soft sand and sort of in both directions, you know, so when you go out, you have to climb it and then on the way back. It's a big mm-hmm. climb as well. And and I've seen YouTube videos where guys are hitting that at full throttle, fourth gear, like full send, smashing into their bump stops, you know, mm-hmm. massive carnage, breaking everything. And I crawled up it in second gear without spinning a tire because I just had low tire pressures. 
So I think, yeah. you know, it, I don't know how that works. Ireland's one of those funny ones where you can get some really good YouTube footage if you want. Oh my God, we went full throttle. It was crazy. Or you can just use your brain and kind of drive. <laughs> Do what's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So drive it's, it's the way. When those, those Fraser Island videos are recommended to me on YouTube, like, you know, I click through, you get to Angala Rocks and they are just full send carnage. And I'm like, that's utterly unnecessary. But yeah. yeah. How that goes. <laughs> it's, I mean, you have to go to Fraser though. It is stunningly beautiful. Like my jaw fell open when I drove to the Northern tip. There's a big sand dune right beside you and you, you kind of drive between the sand dune and the ocean. And I was like, oh my God, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my whole life. That's like Northeast-ish corner of Australia? Yes. Yeah. Just sort of okay. off Brisbane. So yeah, e Eastern coast. Okay. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Very, oh very God. achievable. You could, you could fly into Brisbane, rent a four wheel drive and spend an incredible week on Fraser Island. Like unforgettable. So long as you don't. Sorry. I've found the images yourself. of the rocks. Oh my gosh. Come on. They're all not appropriate. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I remember the show with Joel when he told us about this and we were like, there was radio silence when we were looking at pictures of, of how stupid people are. But oh, it's I crazy. I why, yeah. I don't know why we're surprised. I mean, yeah. It's... So yeah, Fraser Island was was definitely a highlight. I mean, there's there were a lot of highlights. There were a lot of places that I've always wanted to go to, and finally getting there and being like, "Oh my god, this is incredible!" Mm. Just the the line of oh. fours in the background yeah. of this. As and you like, how do we do this? You punch in on yeah. that so we can like at least criticize the line, like the the vehicular. <laughs> incompetence going on i mean the first one that looks like an 80 Which yeah one? there'll be lots of 80s and hundreds there'll be like isuzu d max is in there yeah the trailers be... are what always get me i'm like ha. yeah we don't yeah. we don't have d maxes here we have colorados no. and, and canyons which are kind of the same thing but yeah you know, yeah lots generally... of port rangers are really popular over there now they come in a diesel um prado is extremely popular and then Prado. the 200 series Land Cruiser because it, it comes with the four and a half liter turbo diesel V8. So it's extremely mm. popular. Sad. Not what yeah. mine has. <laughs> <laughs> well, our the other Prado we know launched an alternator tonight <laughs> it, and is on a yeah, tow truck right literally now. Literally the conversation yes. a half hour or an hour and a half ago was, uh, ah, yes, I'm so glad I own it. Oh, no, I may have, may have yeah. found a photo of that. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Sorry, Camille. Yeah. yeah. But well, it, it's it probably. definitely was interesting in Australia. I think I saw more 70 series Land Cruisers than every other kind of vehicle put together. What? Yeah. And and it was so crazy, actually. We did a fair bit of four-wheel driving with some guys in, you know, the troop carriers and they have them all outfitted. They didn't know each other and their Land Cruisers were so identical, they actually struggled to know which vehicle was theirs. They would go to get what? and get in oh. the wrong one because you have the roof rack, the front bumper, the tires, the wheels, Circle. the suspension. Yeah. And, and when I say the, I mean like there's only one brand that you would even consider. Yep. And they only come yep. in yep. two or three colors anyway from the factory. Tan, and so gray, black, white. It's tan, white, and there's a dark blue color. And I've only ever seen like three of them. So tan and white are the only two colors. And I'd it's... say 95% of them are tan. Did you and... remind them that they have number plates? Yeah, I guess you could do that. <laughs> um but it was it was really strange to see. You end up with this like follow the leader procession of like hundred and fifty thousand dollar Land Cruiser followed by hundred and fifty thousand oh dollar ding ding. Every God. they're identical in every possible aspect, and they're all just one at a time driving the obstacle. Just did you yeah. happen upon a single other gladiator in your travels? I happened upon one in the Victorian High Country. Yep, a guy was what? driving one of the harder tracks, and he was loving it. And on the road one time up in Queensland on the highway, I passed one going the other direction and he'd had like a rooftop tent and a rack. Did you do the Jeep wave? Oh, did I definitely him, did the Jeep. Oh, yeah. The, the, the wave? You did a big Jeep wave, yeah. Oh.